Hi, I'm Azal from The Upcoming. It's lovely to meet you both. I know we spoke briefly on the red carpet yesterday, but it's yeah. really nice to kind of have this as a bit more in depth today as well. Um, yeah. So I really loved the emotional depth of the film. I thought it was really funny, it brought so much to the screen. But I know, David, you started this with um, with Chris, obviously, as a for you, Chris, it started as a sort of stand-up comedy and then you worked into a short. But what what made you want to go and do this and bring this into like a feature? Well, we were given the opportunity after the short, really. Um, Rupert, the producer, sent it to Ollie Madden at Film 4 and Ollie just came back and said, do you want to, you know, turn it into a film? We're like, what? <laughs> yeah, so we got the opportunity to write the script and I never really thought it'd get made. I just thought it might be a, a, a pleasant writing job. And then, um, yeah, just uh, kept rolling on. Yeah, great. And were there any elements of the short that you were really excited to particularly expand upon in the feature? Um, well, we changed it a little bit. We, we, we didn't want it to be quite so bleak because the short is a little bit bleaker and a, and a bit more melan melancholic. We wanted to make it a little bit more lighter. Um, but I guess the, we did keep some of the scenes really in terms of their first conversation, the whole, you built my body, all that kind of conversation. Uh, that's almost word for word in the, in the feature. So yeah, some of their dynamic we, we wanted to keep. And we did improvise a little bit in the short film and uh, we realised that that kind of works sometimes. So we tried to do that as much as we could in the feature. And we obviously, we wanted to create a cabbage gun. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, no spoilers. <laughs> Yeah, we wanted to create like what um, bigger, bigger, more inventions and stupider yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. And um, can you tell us a little bit about both your characters and how that relationship kind of shifts emotionally along the way? Because um, it kind of starts as you know being invented, and then the robot, your character being invented, and then and this emotional journey to the end. Can you yeah. talk us through that and a bit about your well, character? Sort of late on, um, we came up with the evolution of Charles um, sort of beginning as a child, as a toddler, and then, you know, moving through the teenage years and then wanting to see the world and leave Brian. So we kind of, uh, we looked at, I, I've got, at the time of writing, I had like a 14, 15 year old, my, my eldest son was 14, 15 year old. And uh, I was going through some tricky moments with him, with him wanting to let go and, that was really painful. And um, so there were quite a few experiences there we could nab from. Um, yeah, so we could begin with Charles being uh, really being close to Brian and really liking each other. And then they start to, yeah, clash a little bit as he progresses. So it was just having fun with that change of his personality. And what do you think are some of the key themes that you try and explore through this film? Yeah, well, I guess uh, loneliness and uh, friendships. I mean, we, we would talk a lot about how it's strange how you can have a friendship with somebody or a relationship or with family. You can have these really close connections and then months or years down the line, you can kind of go your separate ways, which is always quite a weird thing to experience. So uh, we had elements of that in there. But um, yeah, we also just wanted to make it a bit of a feel-good film. Yeah, we just wanted to make up funny film didn't we we wanted to get these two on the screen because mm. they made us laugh and yeah yeah and I think um what sort of films do you both like and did you bring any of that into this feature yourself I mean I love genre films and like action films <laughs> excuse me right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love them so much I get checked up um, there's, even, there's even a bit where um uh, I don't want to give any spoilers, but there's a bit where uh, Charles is holding a certain thing that is a, a, almost a reference to Predator, because Predator <laughs> is a, one of my favourite action films. And me and Jim talked about this one bit uh, where, yeah, Charles is sort of mimicking something that happens in Predator. <laughs> so it's like a subtle nod to one of my favourite films, yeah. But I like all sorts, and we, we both love Pixar films and... Spielberg obviously is a big influence and documentaries as well yeah like that was we actually watched a lot of documentaries for this and especially ones involving loners and and their strange little hobbies and that sort of thing so that yeah we watched probably more of those than we did features yeah 
And can you tell us a little bit about what it was like on location um, for you guys and any sort of challenges that brought by being so isolated in the Wales? Biggest, yeah, the biggest challenge for me was the cottage in the... It was really damp <laughs> and there was nowhere to get changed, really. <laughs> Yeah, we had, our canteen was a cow shed <laughs> that they'd sort of sluiced out. Um, so yeah. we could eat in there. And one, one day, uh, I remember like, Rupert saying, oh, there's going to be a coffee truck coming. And like, oh, brilliant, great. You can get coffee <laughs> an hour later. Oh, the coffee truck's not coming. You couldn't get up the track. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it, so. was, it was just really, it was mainly really cold. I mean, we shot it in November, December, you know, in North Wales. And uh, I remember my feet was just freezing because Charles's shoes were his, with their real thin leather shoes. So my feet were just constantly freezing cold. <laughs> they had to pack sort of heat pads in there so I didn't get frostbite. Yeah, yeah. There was never anywhere to get warm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And how was that for you then being in that costume, you know, going back into it? And, and who on earth made those lovely cardigans and everything? How? Yeah, well, I guess being inside it was a bit like being in one of those emergency tents that people camp <laughs> inside in like bleak weather. Uh, there was a, a scene we shot at a lake, one of the first scenes we did, and there was this, this gale force wind blowing. So the whole costume was just rattling around with me inside it. I felt like I was on the side of Everest or something. Um, but yeah, we, we had an amazing costume department who um, just came up with some brilliant costume ideas, just gave us lots of choices for us to choose from. Uh, yeah. And we realised that it was often the simplest kind of styles that looked funniest in a way. So, And it had to, you had to sort of believe that he would have taken it from his own wardrobe and created it for him. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite free, isn't it, really? And, uh, you know, I was talking to Louise on the red carpet last night. He plays Hazel, your love interest. Um and she was saying that her pet parrot in the home she shares with her mum um, kind of resonated and was like a metaphor for how she felt trapped, her character felt trapped, and how she wanted to kind of break free. Were there any other kind of Easter egg metaphors kind of running through here as well in the feature that you can sort of think of maybe? Um, That's a great Yeah, question. that is a great question. <laughs> <laughs> I think what the answer is. <laughs> There's love. At the moment. Yeah. There's, there's loads of Easter eggs and we don't want to give them away. Yeah, there are bloody loads. I mean, this isn't really... A, I mean, at one point we saw a, um, a video on YouTube of someone who'd just filmed their dog. Uh, uh, and so we basically just thought, that's a, that's be funny if Charles has basically reacted like that dog did. So, uh, yeah, there's we use everything from documentaries to videos of Labradors. And the, and the scene where Brian sees the two sheep... Um, that was kind of, we'd written another scene to explain his reason for building the robot. But instead of filming that, we went back up to Wales to do it. And instead of filming that, we saw these two sheep and thought, got to capture it. It was a beautiful day. So, yeah, that felt like a nice moment to tell the story. And what do you think, sort of, I, I imagine it was quite a lot of fun to film, obviously, a lot of laughter, but what were, was the only sort of standout scene or, or moment for you, either of you, on set? Mine would be when uh, Eddie appears with the, his daughters to take Charles and Charles has to do the dance because that was, you know, we'd written it to be a tense scene, but we, we sort of knew it would be hoped it would be funny with Charles having to do the dance and it was really difficult to perform because it was so ridiculous him doing all that for like half an hour. <laughs> and I was, I was exhausted as well because we have to constantly do this takes for me dancing. Yeah, so by the end of it, I could, yeah, I could barely breathe. So I had to act fearful where it's act in actual fact. Yeah, so you're enjoying like, watching me suffer. I was <laughs> loving it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And obviously, David, for you, you bring Brian to life in, in Ricky Gervais' series Afterlife, um, obviously in a slightly different context because he's more sociable, et cetera, et cetera. But, but when that series ended, were you kind of determined to keep him alive by giving him this platform in Brian and Charles? Well, because when, um, when we got the script commission with Film 4, that kind of afterlife sort of started at the same time. So I didn't, I didn't really look ahead. I didn't imagine both things would be out at the sort of same time. So it just happened two or three years down the, down the road. It's like, oh, there's two Brian's. But, yeah, my, 
like Ricky's version is quite, uh, he's a dirty, dirty old man, but a loner again. But yeah, with our version, we wanted him to be a little bit more likeable from the off, I think. Um, yeah, it feels a little bit more family friendly as well. Your yeah, version, well, we so. definitely wanted to do that. We wanted it to be a family movie. Yeah, yeah. and I think yeah. you succeeded that. And with, and with regards to the casting process for the other people that play the characters like Hazel, you know, etc. Um, did you have people in mind for that? Were they friends? Did you feel like you, you know you needed to have people that you could work with that you already knew? Uh, well, initially, I think uh, we just had some amazing suggestions, but it was really. Uh, it starts an issue with who's available because we were given permission to film eight months after lockdown. So a lot of people either weren't available because they'd suddenly wanted to just work or they didn't want to film because they were still worried about pandemic and everything. Um, but I think we just got really lucky with, with who we got. And we always wanted to choose people who were just really believable because it's such a weird film in a way. The more grounded and relatable and real the, the other characters can be, the better. You know, when Jamie came in for his audition, he was like, real quiet aggression. We're like, oh, my God. Yeah, it's quite yeah. scary. It's really scary, just so real and believable and not try hard. It was brilliant. And same with um, Louise. Yeah. yeah, and Nina was amazing, yeah. Louise. And then also the two uh, twins, Marion and uh, Lowry, who are, who are amazing. Yeah. They just came to the, the casting process. And initially, we'd, we'd thought of them as being a lot younger, about 10 years old or so. But when we saw their audition, we just thought, oh, they're so, they're really, you really believe them as being mean and... Uh, horrible. Yeah, 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 believable. Yeah, horrible. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, well, thank you very much for speaking to me. I think that's all we've got time for. Um, and congratulations and um, good luck with it, with, you know, after Sundance and hopefully lots of people enjoy watching it because I did. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye-bye.